Hello, good morning. My name is Blair Atkins. I'm the owner of Blair Atkins Photography. And oh my gosh, what is that? Can you guys hear that? Today's topic is size doesn't matter. And much like our friends out in the construction crew on the outside, we're going to discuss the right tools for your next wedding shoot. If you're ready, let's go. Okay guys, thanks for putting up with that little bit of a noise. We've moved back down to the office where it's a bit quieter. Welcome back to our channel. For those who have followed us, thank you very much for that. For those that are finding us for the first time, we appreciate you having along. If you guys find these videos informational uh, with some fair amount of instruction, I try to put a little bit of humor into each of the, the videos, please hit the subscribe button and the like um, we're young service starting out here on YouTube, although we've been around for some time and it would really help our channel grow. Now, having said that and gotten that out of the way, let's look a little bit about equipment. The first piece of equipment I want to show you, the first lens I want to show you is the Sigma 70 to 200. Now this lens, and I'll reach over here and get it. This lens is the granddaddy of the cameras that we carry right here, okay? Uh, this lens allows us to get close enough to you if it's either one side of the church or the other side of the church because Catholic churches, uh, and rightfully so, amongst other services and other religious uh, groups, they realize that you do have a job to do. Your photographer is there and you're paying your photographer a good amount of money, but they also don't want you right up underneath the, uh, the noses of the couple that's getting married, and understandably as such, right? Um, so this is the first lens we'll use. You see us in the church with this lens. We can stand in either corner of the top of the church. We can also stand at the back of the church and if we're really really lucky and the church has a balcony in it we'll be able to stand at the balcony. And Once I put up the diagram and once we jump into the computer I'll explain even better. Now the second lens that I am going to carry on a regular basis during your wedding shoot is the Sigma 24 to 70. Now this lens is more of an intimate lens in regard to its focal length of exposure but it still allows us to be close enough or far enough from where the action is being taken place right and we get nice tighter shots right. This is a wider lens it takes in a greater scope of the front of the church and it allows us to reflect on your bridal party the guys on the one side the girls on the other side right but primarily this lens is used closer to the end of the actual wedding service when we're taking family portraits and the group gatherings and we bring mom and dad up on both sides. Now, having said that, looked at both uh, cameras and looked at both pieces of uh, the lenses on it and understood it. Let's jump into the computer and I'll start putting this together for you guys. Hey guys, so what I've put together here is a couple of uh, images from recent jobs that we've completed. I've picked each of these images specifically to give you an idea of the equipment that we're using on your wedding. Uh, and each of these images was a little brief discussion, uh, just how the image worked out, where we were, and uh, how we accomplished to, uh, like I say, not get under your nose. Now this first image was taken from the morning bridal preparation. Our young bride is to the right, is being helped by her mother uh, zip up the back of her dress. Now, this image was taken with the, um, the Sigma 24 to 70. Now, if you look at the quality of the image, we're close enough to the image because it's a zoom lens, but we're also further back enough not to interrupt mother and daughter while she's getting ready there. And yet the beauty of this lens is how close we can get and the detail of the image that we can get. It was a, it was a, a beautiful wedding that day. And uh, this one image just personifies how beautifully the rest of the day went. Now, we're going to move into the church. I'm going to bring this graphic up here. 
Wow. Doesn't this look like uh, pretty much every church everywhere you're going to go? Now, each of the places that we would stand during the course of the, um, the day, right? I've outlined the most significant spots with the, uh, the red numbering. Now, during the early morning of the shrut, as we're moving into the uh, religious ceremony in the morning, spot number one, you may see that right up here. I'm just going to move my mouse around a bit. You'll see spot number one. Now that's primarily where I'm going to be standing. I'm the lead photographer. I'm going to be standing up at the front. Now as I'm waiting for the bride and her entourage to pull up in the limousine outside, by standing up at the front here before, and I'll specify before the ceremony begins, this position here allows me to photograph the, um, the groom and uh, his gentleman as uh, as well as the reaction of the uh, crowd, your guests, as they're seated back here in the seatings. Uh, position number two, if we move the cursor down here, that is where my assistant, that's where my second shooter will be standing. Now, the great thing about working with my assistant or working with a second shooter is you develop a certain level of communication. Uh, essentially your second shooter, my second shooter, anyone's second shooter is the lookout and he or she's going to be looking for the limousine to roll up and the uh, bride to pop out with her entourage. Once I know that, I'll be of course stationed at the top and I'll be sitting there with the really long lens, okay? So my assistant in pos position number two would grab the girls in her entourage as they come through the front doors of the church, I will be standing up here in this position. My assistant will be using a 24 to 70. I will be using a 70 to 200. And that way we ensure we have double coverage of the uh, entourage entering into the church. Once the service has begun, then we wanna make sure we're not under your nose and my assistant and I will fall back respectively to positions number three as well as position number four. Now this gives us a bird's eye view that we're able to photograph the service, the ceremony, as it's taking place right up here in the middle. And if we're lucky enough, some churches do offer a very beautiful um, area above the foyer with some seating up there. If we're really lucky, there's a space up there without seating that we can easily work around. And we'll be able to shoot down from position five up to the top. So if I'm working with one assistant that day, it'll be position three and it'll be position four. If I'm working with a second assistant that day and we're lucky, I'll have a third lens up on position number five. Now, let me just give you an idea of what we're looking at. When the bride and the groom, the bride and the uh, mother, Sorry, I was going to say groom, but the groom's standing up at the front, isn't he, right? When the, uh, the bride and her entourage starts working in their way from the back doors, these are images that I can pick up. Uh, again, working with the long lens, it really allows me to dig right into the image, right? And this, this image here was probably about a good 100 plus feet away from where I was standing. But look at the clarity and look at the depth of the image, right? I can center in on the bride walking from the back of the church right up to the front of the church. Now, if I have a third shooter, or if I so assign my second lens, we can start getting something from the balcony. Now here, the second or the third lens was up in the balcony shooting down. So that gives us another really great perspective. In fact, you see, we have also got... Uh, two other photographers there at the front that uh, were also retained for the day. This was a big job. I remember this job here and this a big church here in Toronto. And uh, there was a lot of coverage on that. So once we get through bride and groom coming in, uh, we've got everybody seated up at the front. Uh, then we can start getting into the actual service itself. Now, remember position two and three. This is a very nice representation of position two and three that uh, from both sides we can start to photograph your wedding and uh, we won't miss anything. And at the same time, we're not even in the picture. So the guy that's doing your videographer or videography who might be standing halfway down your aisle, we're not in his way and he's not in our way. So it works out very well.
Okay guys, so we've had a little bit of a discussion. We've gone through a couple images that I pulled out for you. We've discussed the differences in the focal lengths and the clarity and the value of what it is to have different lengths, uh, different lenses available that must be available during the course of the wedding. And these are just all stuff that, uh, knowledge that's built up over a period of time, a period of years about what works and what doesn't work, right? Uh, as your photographer, it's our responsibility, again, to be prepared uh, to anticipate uh, what is coming next and uh, how we may best serve you, right? We always have to remember weddings only happen once and there's no second retakes. So thank you once again for visiting our channel at Blair Atkins Photography. If we can help you, if you found the information in our videos to be interesting and perhaps a little bit entertaining, I try to keep it not so dry, um, by all means, please give us a call. If you like this video, please uh, hit subscribe and hit the, uh, the notification bell and uh, we'll continue Continue to bring you a video on a weekly basis uh, to help with your understanding of photography techniques and procedures and photo finishing and uh, we thank you again for visiting from Blair Atkins Photography from our family to yours have a super day